Hey Riley Besties and welcome to the Writing with Anna New podcast where we talk about all things writing. I am so excited for this episode because I feel like there is a lot to unpack. I just hope this episode really gives you some encouragement and I hope I just kind of, you know, give you some inspiration and motivation to finish that book. Um, so today we're obviously going to be talking about why you haven't finished your book yet. And I don't mean to say that as like, why haven't you finished your book yet? I am saying that to encourage you. Um, I can tell you I hadn't finished my book until like three years, four years into my writing career. It just takes a long time. And I definitely have identified some really important things that were kind of just holding me back in terms of my writing like hobby. And it's just really interesting. And I just wanted to talk about it today and maybe help you guys to finish that book and just gain motivation in this episode. Okay, so to start off with, I just want to say that my voice is a little bit raw right now. So if I do like have some voice cracks or something, I'm so, so sorry. Um, and also, I just want to say thank you for all the love and support on my podcast so far. It truly just means the world and I'm literally like blown away with how many of you guys actually like this content because I was literally so, so, so scared and just like a little bit worried with if this will actually help anybody and I hope it is. So if it is, definitely comment down below and let me know um, on my YouTube channel. But let's get started on today's episode. So the reason why it took me such a long time to finish my book is because of one main reason and I hope you guys could hopefully you know um really connect with me on this and that is the fact that we just have as writers so many ideas. I can tell you there's so many writers who just like can't stay on track, can't you know not get distracted because we are just filled with ideas and creativity that we want to do everything at once and I feel like I have been doing a bit of reflection and I've kind of find found out that that's kind of really a trend that's happened in my life. I feel like creative people, creatives have just this problem of wanting to do so many things at once. It is kind of like a curse and it's like we try to spread ourselves too thinly over you know this huge amount of space so we can tick all the boxes, do everything at once and have all this thing, like all these things to say for ourselves and be proud of. And I feel like since when I was at school, at least this is my experience where I would be okay. I would be quite adequate, quite good at a lot of different things, whether that be sport and academics, whether that be like music, whether that be um, my hobbies as well. I would just have so many different hobbies because I would love all of them are, or, you know, I would have so many different commitments out of school and in school because I would love it. And that kind of led me to get like this award at the end of my year 12, my end of my high school, where it was like the all rounder award. And <laughs> I kind of have this joke with my dad about being like all rounder, being someone who just like is okay at everything but never excelled in this one thing and not to get too sidetracked but this kind of relates to how I feel my writing has like become because I have so many ideas on the daily. I can tell you guys every single day I have another idea for a full-on book that I just want to like sit down and plot and it's just like so so bad. I get so frustrated with myself but I just go on a tangent in my mind about how good this book is going to be and that this book's going to be the one. Like this book, I have it plotted like, you know, page to page, you know, front to back. I have it all there. When in reality, like it's not, it's just one of those willy nilly ideas that will end up letting me burn out. And it's just such a big predicament because the amount of projects I have currently, it's more than the, the fingers on my hands. It is a struggle. So the thing that I really want to encourage you guys is maybe the reason you haven't been able to finish that one book is because of distraction, because of other shiny new ideas 
that capture your attention, that you spend more time on, that you, you know, start to plot, you start to world build, you start to kind of flesh out your characters and you're, you know, actually start writing your book and you forget about your, your other books, your other projects that you started that you were just as passionate about and you kind of almost convince yourself, right? Um, that the current book you're working on, the the shiny idea that you've captured in your mind, like that book is the best. That is your best idea. That is like the one. When it's only because it's shiny. It's only because it's new. It's only because it's different from the book you've been stuck writing for years and years. The reason why you might be getting bored of your book and thus really getting distracted by other cool projects and ideas like not not to be um like disregarding your new ideas definitely keep them I bet they're jewels just write them down tuck them away but don't be captured by their shininess if you know what I mean so I definitely encourage you guys just to not get distracted and of course that leads to not getting bored Because, yeah, the reason why you're getting bored of your project is because you've been working on it for so long. And when you think about it, when people do read your work, they're only going to be reading it for a few days to a week. When you have been reading it, writing it, being in your world with your characters for years, it's bound to get boring. It's bound to get redundant. It's bound to lose your interest because... Even though you love your characters, you love your worlds, you know, you have so many cool ideas, so many amazing, amazing worlds that you want to get to that you get distracted and thus it makes you spend more time on your project and thus makes you feel like you're never going to get to the end, thus you're getting bored, thus you don't finish your book. (sighs) It is a predicament and I understand it full heartedly. But I guess that was one of the biggest reasons I had for just not being able to write my book start from finish. And it's really interesting because the book that I actually was in, like ended up finishing, which was I First Met You in a Graveyard, that book was a book I wrote in a month. And I feel like as soon as you write one book, writing books become becomes just so much easier because you know you can do it. So the th- second thing I want to talk about is... A lack of self-belief. I think it's a given. You know, being a writer, it's, it's it just is so... Sometimes just like... Oh, it's just so lonely. It's so hard. And you just pull yourself apart and pick at every single insecurity and weakness you have in your writing, your well-building, in your characters. That, you know, you're not going to end up writing your book or at least being passionate about writing because you feel like you suck at it. Like, that's kind of just the um the reality of becoming a writer or just wanting to become a writer um so yeah having self-belief is really hard if you don't have things to kind of prove your self-belief on so when you do if you when you like even write a book you have that book you have that manuscript start from finish you can say I've written a book if you haven't written a book you can't have that backing you can't have that literal physical evidence to say I am a writer I write books because you have not written one yet and it's so difficult because you're just like why I call myself a writer yet I have nothing to show for it and I just want to try to encourage you guys that it does not matter how many books you've read or written or how long you've been writing or how long you've loved stories or storytelling and books and you know writing or like Even if you write on your phone, it literally does not matter. You can call yourself a writer. It's just how it is, okay? Um, So yeah, self-belief and overcoming self-doubt definitely is a big self-improving journey. And it's really definitely something you have to work out yourself as you do go through your writing career and your writing hobby. But if you wanted some tips, I would definitely like to share some insight on just how I gained some motivation and self-belief. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So the first thing that I just really kind of realized is that I realized that I like writing. Okay. I just like it. I love writing because it makes me happy. It makes me passionate. It just brings me to a world that I've created and I've been able to just like 
write from my own freaking brain. Like it's kind of a cool, a cool thing to think about when you realize why you like writing and you realize that you're literally doing it for fun because you're a young writer or you have a job and writing's just on the side. Like if you just kind of don't even think about writing your book or like publishing a book, but just think about writing as an art, as a hobby, as something you love to do, I feel like the pressure definitely just like lifts off your shoulders because then you start to believe in yourself because, you know, you can't fail at something you just have an interest in. You know what I mean? It's just like watching anime. You like to watch anime because it makes you happy and it doesn't really like, you know, you don't have anything to prove for it. You don't have to say, oh my gosh, I need to watch all these anime. Like, oh my gosh, I have to like, you know, make sure I watch this, 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 and put in all on my list. Same with like guitar. If you just like playing guitar because you like playing guitar, you're just playing guitar. You don't have to like go and like play for like an orchestra or like an, an audience, right? You just enjoy playing it because you enjoy playing it. It's kind of really simple. You love to write because you literally like to write, not because you like to publish books, not because you like to finish books, but because you love the art of writing. I hope that kind of makes sense a little bit and just helps you conceptualize and like go back to your roots. You like writing because you like writing. <laughs> Another thing that kind of helps me with, with like self-belief is uh, rereading my work. I think I've said this in a few of my videos and maybe on one of my podcasts, but rereading your work definitely does just help give you motivation, give you strength because I mean, there are two ways this can go. You can like read your work and be like, oh my gosh, like I really love this scene I wrote. I think um, the characters are really, really cool here. I love how I conceptualize the scene and the setting. Or it can go down the other way, which is like, oh, um, this, this, I would not call this writing. You know what I mean? Um, and just like, yeah, I know it's a bit, bit difficult, but I honestly find really great inspiration in my own work because a lot of people are like, oh, Anna, how do you get inspiration? How do you like gain inspiration from your books? How do you get motivation? And I get motivation and inspiration from myself, from my past works. It's kind of cliche, kind of weird, kind of maybe self pride like, but I think my own design, my own ideas, sorry, my own ideas fuel new ideas. I like other people's ideas, feel other people's ideas. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is that if you have not written your book yet, it's okay. It is okay. I feel like you will do it someday. Okay. So when you think about it, like, yeah, I haven't written my book yet. You're like, yeah, I've been writing for a long time. I've been working on this for a long time. And I just can't seem to write. I just can't seem to get it done. I just can't seem to hold my schedule. It will get done. You started that book for a reason. You will finish it for that reason. I think if you go back and really reflect on why you wrote that book, what really sparked. And like, yeah, it could be like, oh, I just saw a graveyard and I thought it would be really, really cool. I'm talking about my, I first met in a graveyard manuscript. But that was not the reason I actually started that book. In terms with getting ideas when you start writing a book, right? You have an idea. You have like a little spark of inspiration. But there's the the greater sort of ideas, the greater sort of meanings and motivations and values and like motifs that you kind of play into that get you to actually start that idea. So yeah, we have all ideas right up in our brain just floating around, right? But it's something bigger, something more deep. And sometimes it's unconscious. But that deepness, that sort of element that surrounds this idea gives you motivation to start that book. So why can't that same deepness, that same motivation be used to finish that book? Um, so when you look back, just like where your book started, how excited you were for that book why you wanted to start that book and why you feel like it's important for people to read your book. Maybe it's a book just for yourself to read um, and to finish. Like that is reason enough. 
maybe you just really love a character and you feel like you can really connect with them and relate to them and you want to see them grow as encouragement for your own life. That is reason enough. So find your own reason. Maybe you haven't actually found it yet as you have written your book. Just kind of come back to your roots. Really reflect. Really just try just hard. Like lie in your bed with your closed eyes. Listen to some music. Just really reflect and think. Why did I start this book? And why do I want to finish it? I really hope you guys enjoyed this podcast, this episode. I know it was a little bit shorter um, on the shorter side, but again, I just really want to encourage you guys. You guys can do it. I believe in you. I literally am just like you, just a new writer, just like someone who has like an amateur sort of hobby, but I am so passionate about it. Even if I don't write for a week, I could talk about writing forever. So just kind of realize your ups and your downs your good times, your bad times, when you write a book, when you just dump a book, it's it's okay. It's all part of the writing journey. And when you really do think about it, such a big last tip, last piece of advice. No matter what book you're writing, no matter what project you're working on, no matter what chapter, what scene, what piece of dialogue, what sentence you are typing, that will help you in the long run. Like that that act of writing, right? That act of writing helps you, helps you build your writing, your your motivation, your strength as a writer. Just like writing, just keep writing, just keep trying to write, keep trying to think, try to brainstorm. Like every single part of your writing journey really matters. Whether that be if you're procrastinating writing right now by listening to this podcast, or you're just like writing your heart out at 2am because you want to. Those little moments really matter. So with that as a last thought, I hope you be encouraged to write that book, to finish that book. And I can tell you once you finish that book, it feels so surreal, so weird. And just hang on to that feeling. Hang on. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. If you did, please um, click a follow and also stay tuned for my next one. I hope to see you in my next video and I will see you guys later. Bye, Riley Besties.